Your Highness, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Noor Al-Swaidi. I'm here from Abu Dhabi Art. And we want to give a warm and gracious thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Villain for hosting us in this beautiful Japanese-designed garden with their amazing private collection on view for all of us to enjoy. And I'd also like to say that today, Maya will be moderating this amazing panel of collectors and talent. Maya Allison needs no introduction. She is the founding executive director of NYU Abu Dhabi's Art Gallery. She is also the chief curator of NYU Abu Dhabi. And she's also curating the UAE Venice Biennale 2022 that's hosting <laughs> our, one of our favorite artists, Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim. So Maya, I'll give it to you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And here you go. Thanks. Thank you so much, Noor. Um, it's really just such a pleasure to see everybody gathered here. And I want to welcome Sheikh Zayed. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, of course, thank, first of all, Mr. and Mrs. Belain for hosting this lunch. And this moment came about in part because we have opened an exhibition that looks at the life, at the work collected by a woman 50 years ago, now on view. And in the course of thinking about this exhibition, I realized how important the role of the collector is in the writing of art history. And that we think about collecting, you know, famously auction house stories, things like this. But in fact, um, when you collect art, you are part of the making of art history. And I want to talk today with my guests about this subject. And I first need to thank also the NYU AD Art Gallery team, particularly Sebastian Gruba and Wafa Jadala, who made this event possible. And our media partners, the National Yalla Magazine, Al Etihad, Harper's Bazaar Art Book, and Al Bayan for their continued support. So this event is a partnership with Abu Dhabi Art, and I thank Abu Dhabi Art for making this possible. Okay, so I'm going to start with a set of questions for our esteemed collectors. And I will introduce you, and I will ask you to continue that introduction of yourself by telling us about your collection. And then we will proceed to a short conversation um, with questions and answers from the audience if you wish. And I know it's warm, so we'll keep it brief and to the point. Um, but first, we have to start with Sheikh Zayed, a patron, um, a collector, um, and the the founder of UAE Unlimited as well, and a longtime collector um, in the UAE, but also internationally. And I first met you um, in 2015 or 14, and in that Has moment- Has it been that long, actually, it's been Maya? forever. God. We, we were children. We were children. <laughs> um, and, I, and in that moment, you told me the story of how you began um, enjoying and appreciating art. And can you tell us the story of how your well, collection began? I'm happy that we have an individual here who has been <laughs> also kind of key to the way that we've been collecting. She's been my mother's friend for years. And uh, she definitely had her part to play in all of that. And of course, I can never forget my lovely art advisor, Pia, who has also been one of the first, actually the first auction I ever went to was with her in Paris, which is a fact, something we cannot change, but <laughs> I'm sure if they had CCTV cameras, they would agree on that, uh, on that note. But um, I think that one of the things that is very difficult is that, and something that I want to talk about is that when we, when we really define or put into stone what art is, then we've lost the, the message completely because I think art is always revisited and I think that with time, art can look, can seem very different because in context of when you look back to it, actually with a lot of academia when it came to art was that they were trying to promote unfashionable art at the time. Okay. And so that changed the whole perspective of things. So when you think about like, the way that we love Impressionism. Impressionism was never popular in its time in terms of major collectors. It became popular because some people became adamant in their, ac in their academic outlook that they were like, no, these people need to be recognized and they need to have a voice in all of this and we can't just disregard it. Um, I have the lovely Isabelle de la Bruyere as well here with us and uh, she's someone who definitely opened my eyes on a, 
on a global scale of what art could be. She definitely showed me things that were out of my comfort zone that I, with time, learned to appreciate and accept and understand as well. So it made me a better human being with it in the process. Amazing, thank you. Um, I'm going to continue down the line. I'm coming back. I'm not finished asking questions of you. Um, but next up is Smita Prabhakar, um, entrepreneur, collector, and art patron who's been based in the UAE for, for over four decades. Um, her collection focuses on South Asian contemporary art, and many of you may have visited uh, the Ashara Art Foundation, which is uh, built on her collection. State Modern Advisory Committee, um, Acquisitions Committee, Middle Eastern Circle of Guggenheim Museum, and Peggy Guggenheim Collection. So very much like your neighbor, you are both advising and supporting collecting activities in museums, but also your own personal collection, which is now forming a foundation. Tell us the beginning of this story. I don't know how, to, does this work? Yes. yes. It does. Okay, I didn't <laughs> know how to work it. Firstly, I want to thank Fairuz for a very nice lunch. Thank you. Indeed. Maya, thank you for putting me up on this panel, which is very prestigious. And your highness, I mean, sitting next to you is a dream, okay? <laughs> so I hope the photographs look good. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going home, right? We will make sure. Okay, okay. so that's the deal. Um, um, Maya, your question. For me, collecting has been my personal journey. So every work that I've collected has spoken of what I was at that time of in my life. So it, it kind of resonates with how I have moved forward. So when I started, I started with the moderns, which you are showing. Uh, uh, they were my moment. But today, I'm into the contemporary space. The, the reason is we all change as we get older. Uh, our ideas change and our capacity to understand more and more. Yep. So I would say my collection is a testimonial to the time that I've spent in the UAE as a person, as a diasporic Indian, and it reflects all those facets that I have built myself on. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you have a chance to visit the Ashara Art Foundation while you're here, I really recommend it. Thank you. OK. Now, I to do our too. dear. By the way, I do too. It's a beautiful, beautiful foundation yes. with a beautiful message to the world. Thank you, really. It's, uh, uh, it's showing 14 photographers, 10 of whom don't have galleries, have never had an exhibition before. And for them, it's their first outing. So to be on a stage where they can be seen by all the audience here, is a, it's a dream come true. And it's a dream come true for me, too, in many, many ways. Thank you. Thank you. Alejandra Castro, Rio Seco. How is that? Correctly. Thank you. And I will keep this short, but I think the most important thing for us to know is, in addition to being an active board member of prestigious institutions and organiza organizations, such as the Frederick Chopin Foundation in Poland, the Museo del Barrio in New York City, and the international Jose Limon Ballet, uh, as well as Guggenheim Abu Dhabi, she also has founded uh, MIA, M-I-A, which is a private art collection with a global footprint aimed at promoting women artists and their work. Now I'm gonna stop there because I wanna ask you the story of how you began this collection and the decision to collect um, and the details of exactly what it is, this MIA Art Foundation. It's okay, you listen. Uh, the first, thank you for inviting me to this uh, beautiful house, Fairuz, for, you ha for opening your house for this special moment for the art. Thank you for uh, NYU for put all this fantastic person here in the in the group, and of course, uh, our king. I don't know say in in Dubai, but in España is our rey or nuestro príncipe. Uh, thank you so much, and for 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 inviting you. Um, the beginner, but uh, I don't remember too much what is the beginner because I'm collector like uh, 12 years ago. But my collection is only female artists. Uh, my collection have more than 900 pieces of art in the world 
from the different gumas to the different countries, culture, aid, and uh, point of view. Uh, I love the art. For me, the art is part of the life, is part, is a style of the life, is history. When the people know, study history, understand what happened with the art, of course. Uh, but in my case, in my point of view, I'm feminist, and I want to promote and help the work of the women in the world. And when I'm observing what happened in the art, I see the inequality in the art is no different than inequality in other sectors of the, of the life for the women. And uh, for the women, it's very difficult to many things, and the art is not the exceptional things. And I create my collection. I buy art in the beginner, like a normal collector. The collection people need a little more responsibility for do something. You know? uh, it's not only collection. It's not only put your art in one storage and one storage. It's, I think, show your art, teach about your art, and the other people learn about what you're doing. For this reason, I create a... Uh, Mia Anywhere, and the first virtual museum for only female artists. Mia Collection create one scholarship for women artists in the world. Uh, and too many activities, expositions, and exhibition for visibility of the women's art in the world. That's the short story. Beautiful. Sorry for my English, please. But <laughs> um, and, and I understand that the collection is on online, so part of the collection is online, but the ah. collection is in the different part of the world. Now it's too many pieces in different museums, important museums in the world. You can see piece Amazing. of art of my collection. Okay, great. And finally, the esteemed Mrs. Ferus Ville. We're so happy to be able to see your collection in person. And so everyone here now has walked through and seen the different rooms. And when I first encountered your collection, I was so surprised to see the range and the extent of the work um, just living in your house. And I, I would love to hear um, the story of the beginning, but first I need to make sure people know who you are. But first of all, Maya, I think that we all deserve to give uh, Feruz a round of applause yes. for hosting us. She's been fantastic. <laughs> She's been a lovely human being to not just the art community, but the community in whole. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Verlaine, who is, in addition to having been awarded the prestigious title of Chevalier des Arts et des Lettres, and my French is not so good, but you understand. Um, she is also uh, a patron of these, the Les Amis du Centre Pompidou de Paris, and the Association Porte Ouverte sur l'Art. See, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Um, and a founding member of the Louvre Abu Dhabi Patrons Circle, as well as an active supporter and patron of Abu Dhabi Art. Uh, the list goes on, but we're gonna stop there for now because I wanna hear this story. You hear me? Yes. First of all, I have to thank my husband. <laughs> I love a round of applause. Because <laughs> when, when I met Jean-Paul, he was already a collector. Uh, he had uh, African art collection. He told me I don't like it because uh, I didn't buy uh, good quality. Uh, let's sell it and we start. We were uh, living in Paris. He sent me to the Ecole du Louvre to learn 18th century furniture and art. And finally, the test has changed. We moved to Abu Dhabi. We, we left our furniture in France in the storage. And sent, uh, Slowly, slowly, we start to, to, to look around. Uh, collecting for me is a kind of love, because I love everything beautiful. We start uh, selling, in, uh, we sell our furniture uh, collection, and we start to, to, to buy in the Middle East. And uh, we were always uh, eclectic in our shows. And since we are in Abu Dhabi, we start really with focus in the Middle East, uh, because it's my country. I was born in Syria. And uh, to, to look to all this art uh, around is really a gift. Combination, right? To think about the past and the present together in your collection. In particular, I see this happening. Beginning Sorry. of your collection, starting with the modern, modern masters and then moving into the contemporary. Um, and and when Abby Weed Gray, whose collection, when she was collecting in the 1960s, 
these artists were not famous yet. They were sort of locally known or somewhat famous, and now they're masters. So buying contemporary art is the, the step towards yeah. this. I mean, and this is between the artist producing, the collector, and the museum. And a collector can be a patron, an archivist, a commissioner, a connoisseur, more, it goes on. How do you view yourself? How do you view your relationship to the, the collection that you're making? Um, would, you, would you think of yourself, um, your highness, do you think of yourself as a commissioner? You, I know you are. Do you have a way that you frame what you're doing? Oops. I think the term commissioner, if we think about it uh, in general, means that we're creating for the sake of who has commissioned the work. And you might create something that uh, seems uh, created for you. And I don't think that that's what artists want at the end of the day. Um, I think that in general, uh, we all start c collecting. And one of the weird things is that you only realize when you kind of reflect. Like, the reason why I actually have uh, Middle Eastern contemporary uh, and modern now as well uh, art collection was because of Ali Khadra, the Canvas Art Magazine. I bumped into him randomly back in the day in London, and we used to host him in our house. And we used to have a great time. We used to have artists over, we used to have collectors, but I never really got into it. And I remember specifically being on Sloan Street, and I hear someone call me out from the background, and it was Ali Khadra, and he goes, and he goes, uh, Sheikh Zahid, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just walking around. And he's like, uh, do you have any plans for lunch? I was like, no. He's like, let's grab lunch together. So I told him, what, what brings you to London? Why are you here in town? And he goes, um, I'm here because uh, we, have, we have one of the most transformational shows for Middle Eastern art happening in London right now because Saatchi is showing a show on on uh, art in the region, and it's such a pivotal moment for everyone. And I remember specifically telling him, I was like, I don't like contemporary art. I was like, kids could do that. And he, and he scolded me right there and then. He's like, Sheikh Zayed, please don't say that. He's like, he's like, please understand that you should be proud of what the region is producing, and I really recommend that you go see it. Don't forget that, like, I think that you learn from what you experience. So that's all I knew. And when you come and compare it to contemporary, it's such a clash. It's so different. And so I couldn't get my head around it. And in all honesty, I didn't even go. So while I was walking down King's Road the following day, Sachi was right there in my face. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and see this show. I was like, I must. I went and I saw it. and. I, because it said gallery, for me, anything that said gallery in those days when I was in university meant that you could buy. So I was like, I remember seeing a couple of works, and when I went down to the reception, I was like, uh, I was like I'm interested in, like, what are the prices of the... And they're like, uh, sir, this is a private collection. We do not sell works here. And I was like, and I was like okay, fine, no problem. So uh, fast forward, now I realize that most of them, not all of them, most of the works that I actually liked ended up in my collection eventually. <laughs> um, but it really put me on that trajectory. And uh, I remember when I was discussing with... So Shoba was... So she's like, uh, she's like, you know what? She's like, you should, you should embrace all of this, seeing that you're feeling it. And she helped me start the collection in many ways. And uh, she's been uh, a cornerstone and pillar ever since. And uh, we have a great time, I think, when we come and look at art and understand it. I don't, I, you know, part of me still doesn't realize that when I started doing all of this, was like now a good, what, 15 years we're talking. It's insane when, you, when I come and think about it. But I think that nothing is set in stone. I think that you always look, you're constantly curious. At least I am. I don't think that I can say that about everyone in the world. You're curious and you want to know more. And uh, I think that when you start deconstructing that archaic vision that you have in your head, you understand that you actually collect, even though you don't 
you can't quite put your finger on why you collect the way you do, but there, there seems to be a train of thought that you, in 20, 30 years from now, you kind of look at everything that you, you've acquired and how you've actually curated your collection, and then you kind of go, actually, this makes sense. I'm actually putting what I cannot put into words into a complete exhibition of things that I admired, whether an artist was promoting female equality around the globe, or whether an artist was promoting uh, sustainability in, in their own way. And then you kind of understand that all of these things attracted you in the first place. And, uh, and it represents you as a collector at, this, at the same time. And I think that that's very important, is that you want to have a collection that represents how you think to the world. Because when you do have a collection, your collection represents you in more ways than you can even actually have a conversation with a single individual. If we could just say it, we wouldn't need to make art about it. Yeah? And, and the same when you're acquiring work or when you're building a collection. So, and this is interesting for the Mia collection and also for the Ishara Foundation because the questions that you ask about your collecting practice must have to shift over time. And you've just described a shift that you saw in your own recognition of what you were doing. What other shifts have you experienced as you collect where you change how you think about what you're doing and, and or have decided to actually change your collecting practice where you say, I'm no longer collecting this, now I only collect that. I think you made this decision very early on, yeah? Yeah, I, I'm very agreed then, then when you say, because it's the, the collection speak about the person in too many sense. Uh, for example, in my personal case, I love the equality, but I love the environment, I love animals, and I love too many other things go in the, the same direction to the take care of the world, no? And all the piece of art, for example, Mia collection uh, acquire, adquire, is or need do and represent these uh, these things. In our collection, is not possible to have a piece of art, for example, involucrate uh, animal things or or plastic uh, or. I'm, I'm very take care about this because I think so. Is uh, say collection have a very big responsibility when you really do like no like hobby when you do something seriously no and it's very important you you take care of this one and you take care of what happened in your in your world a lot of people talk about the the what happened with the world now with the pandemic and too many things but i think so the pandemics put in our mind a time for do better things i don't know if i say correctly but uh in the case of the art is no different in the case of the artists, in the case of collectors, it's exactly the same with the government, uh, with the museums, libraries, etc., etc. For this, I think so. The, I'm very surprised that what happened here in Emirat, for example, about the art, because I see the expo, and the expo is something place for business, but the expo has a beautiful exhibition art. Uh, all the event activities relationship with art here is very promote the art and when the people promote the art promote the sensibility art is sensibility and the too many point of view I don't know thank you thank you um, how do you see your collecting changing in the future do you imagine it changing can you think of how it might change how do you see it a hundred years from now it will be in all our cases, we, we will be chronicles of, uh, of a time, of a time gone by. And, peop and the young people who will be living in that time will look back and say, that's how life was. I mean, you know, when, if, if you go to the Taj Mahal, for example, also collectors are also supporting an ecosystem of artisans, of artists, of people who support that entire industry. If you go to the Taj Mahal, for example, uh, Shah Jahan, the Mughal emperor, supported artists who have made motives that can't be replicated today because they were set with precious stones. But today, that is not a possibility. But people like you, me, and everyone here can go to the Taj Mahal and see 
how precious stones were cast in marble. So each of us sitting here will be able to, people will ha be able to look at our collections and say, that's how were artistic work or concepts were materialized in that time, 100 years from now. I think that's my view. Yeah. I think that it's the, our love for excellence and getting quality right, and I think that also time makes a huge difference, is that today we, we're not so fascinated if people can create fantastic, fantastic detailing because of the fact that we've become so modern and we have so many different machinery that can help with all of that. But when you come and you put it into the context of that day and age, you understand that it was something that put a standard. And I think that human beings were constantly looking to put a standard on things. That we don't think that life, if we can create such beauty or we can create such um, dialogue, is that we don't feel like we need to come down from that. If it needs to go up and beyond that level. And I think that this has been like the human journey right at the essence of it all, is that we always want to become better. Like right now, climate change, sustainability, these are the big factors, things that we, th we think about. And even as a collector, like today, I honestly, sometimes I re I'm reluctant on buying things because of shipping. Something as ridiculous as shipping, I was like, I don't want to add to that. And then I was like, if I can buy locally, maybe I should. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you also understand that there might be that one artist that produces that kind of work that makes us all thinking about life differently. And yeah, I want to support that. And I know that I'm in a good position to do all of it. It does this. It, it moves something forward. It changes the conversation um, as in, in a way that is unlike any other way of changing the conversation. Each each purchase, each acquisition, but also each moment of studying and understanding and connecting with the message that the artist is sending. I think this is where there's something about art that, that brings us together. Honestly, I think that uh, one of the, I think the one defining moment, I think, when it came to, um, to going to a museum for me to understand how you can understand life very differently, was the Malba Museum in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, because I automatically, of course, went to the National Museums. And the National Museums were, were built and founded pretty much at the turn of the 20th century. And the, the whole methodology was to bring European culture to South America. So they had a lot of works, like European works, but it was, on my, in my opinion, a lot of it was very underwhelming. Underwhelming in what sense? That I can see the same European works and stronger works in, in Europe, and here it was more to kind of educate the masses back in, back in those days. And uh, so went through the museum, nothing really quite stuck, maybe the contemporary section right at the end, but when I went to the Malba, this is where my whole vision of South America, let alone Argentina, entire continent, changed because of that museum. They had a fantastic collection of South American art, beautifully curated, that gave you an idea of everything that South America went through since people moved to South America. This is transformational. This is what actually is worth coming to go and see. And I think that even when it comes to collecting, like when you come and you look at Arab collections, Arab collections in a lot of sense really came off and started off from a nationalistic approach. And I never re quite realized that I did that as well for so long because I wanted to be proud of what the region was producing. And that's why I was collecting Middle Eastern art. And then you kind of look today that like, actually we don't, Nothing is ever created in solitude. It's always, it's always been that dynamic. You think of Bibi Zerbi and living across the globe, her friends, who she used to meet. She used to be in South America, she used to be in New York, she used to be a great friend of uh, Tamara de Lempica. But then you come and you kind of look at, at, uh, at Jawad Salim, 
in Iraq. His wife, Lorna, was from Wales, and she created fantastic stuff. And who knows how much of that influence, because we never kind of had these conversations with these artists at the time, and we never documented. It will be interesting to know that, like, how much did Lorna have a, an influence on Juad? How much did, the, did his sister, Naziha, have on his scope of work? Because when you put them into context, they actually kind of look very visually similar. So they must have had that kind of bond where things, through collaboration, created great stuff as well. And you know, and, uh, and I, I always like, and now our collecting for Middle Easterners has changed because we understand that we really do en enjoy being international. Like, we en enjoy what we learn. We're compulsive travelers, Middle Easterners. And we, and we genuinely find everything that we see around the world very intriguing. And I think that we just want to have, have some input within that kind of dialogue. And so, definitely, my, at least when I come and look at my own collecting, is that, similar to our hostess, it's very eclectic, and it, and it will always be that way. I even remember that, like, for instance, like now we have artists like Baia, who are considered naive artists, but at the same time, I went to a brilliant exhibition about two years ago in uh, Paris on naive artists, and I think that they've been sidelined for so long that now they're coming into their own. And when you go to that exhibition, it's like we've seen... Once you've seen so much and you've discussed it and you've talked about it, it's time to give it to a new group of individuals to kind of create what, what is contemporary, what is modern, what affects us today. And I think that that's a, a major thing, a major thing that we look at today. I agree. Good. Mrs. Belaine. And you, I want to hear, what is next with your collection? Where to now? I think I still have uh, many paintings to buy. <laughs> <laughs> more, more space, more um, walls. Yes. I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Okay. I find uh, still young, um, uh, our collection. Okay. Can grow more. It can grow more. We just need to grow more walls. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That's what they call a museum. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is the future. Ferros and Jean Paul Museum is good. Good. <laughs> Very good on that note. Okay, so here's the question that you get to leave with and that we can talk about on our way out. What will we be collecting in 100 years? Okay. That's your homework. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.